Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Magicians Without Borders Conversations. This is episode 44. We're going to be talking with Diego Vargas about the history of magic. And it's going to be a very fun and entertaining episode. And uh, before we get started, as always, I want to tell you something about some ways that you can support the work that Magicians Without Borders does. So the first one is... Do you shop at Amazon? And if the answer is yes, please keep doing it. But through smile.amazon.com. And every time that you go to smile.amazon.com, you can select uh, a nonprofit to help or to support. If you are in the U.S., this works perfectly. Or if you are in South America, it also does work perfectly. And go to smile.amazon.com, select Magicians Without Borders, ask your selected nonprofit, and every time you purchase something, a Amazon will donate a, a, a percentage of that to us. So in order to continue the work that we do and that we get to share with you every week. So if you shop at Amazon, continue doing so. So welcome everybody that's listening to us uh, here live. Let me just say hello to all in the chat. And the uh, another way that you can support the work the Magicians for the Borders does is going to Patreon. If you got to if you go to patreon.com slash MWB, you can see the different things that we can do for our Patreons and the different rewards that you get for supporting our work. That's a great, great way to support our work. And a uh, what kind of work do uh, 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 am I talking about? If this is the first time of you listening to this, we do social magic, and this is a podcast about social magic, how we use a performing art as a tool for social change. So we do that in two main ways. One is performing all over the world for uh, the forgotten people of the world, which are uh, mainly refugees and orphan children. We've performed for over a million uh, in over 40 countries. And the second way we do that is we create this uh, education chapters in the slums of big cities all over the world as well. So we go to different places like, for example, Tirraces in the southern uh, part of San Jose, Costa Rica, and train kids in the slums for a long period of time. Uh, we've done that in El Salvador, in Santa Ana, in El Salvador, in Aguachapan, in the southernmost part of Bogotá, in one of the biggest super slums of South America called Ciudad Bolívar. We've also do, done it uh, in South, uh, in uh, Cape, Cape Town, in South Africa, and in Mumbai, in India. And we are working our way to reactivating our latest education chapter in Campinas, Brazil. So that's, uh, that's the kind of work that we do. And on this podcast, we get to talk about it every week with our founder, Tom Werner, who is here with us again. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm very, very uh, 
Good and happy to be here with you and one of our most favorite people in the world, Diego, from oh, yes. Costa Rica, uh, who's a wonderful person and performer and becoming, uh, and I'm excited to uh, talk with him about the history of magic and why that has become so um, uh, important to him you know, lately. Yes. And uh, I think it is very important and I'd love to know why why it is for him. Yes. And, um, and, and could you share with, with our audience a, you know, this, that, that, that they can, you know, help us with topics for our next episode? Oh, yeah. Our um, mailbag uh, episode. Um, and um, the one of the topics that seems, oh, the, oh we were, um, after this mailbag episode, we're going to be um, reviewing a film for Gerard, which mm -hmm. is picks up a theme of uh, mentoring and um, older generations passing on magic to younger generations and just that general idea of of the um, generations of magicians and mentors and important teachers in your life. And we would love any stories, comments, questions about being a mentor, mentoring, mentors in your life. As I know, as I've grown older, that's just become somehow a natural part of being more an elder in the community is that I find myself, and it keeps me younger, it keeps me alive. And like tonight from Diego, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot. I mean, we learn a lot from those people we mentor. And um, so anyhow, um, the mailbag episode, we're not sure all the various topics that we're going to end up um, receiving comments or questions or stories or whatever about. But I'm particularly interested right now in this uh, idea of being a mentor or being mentored or uh, those kind of things. And it will help us prepare for the episode on For Gerard, a film made by DreamWorks Animation. Um, yes. Okay, Tom, because that's very good. We do need your comments and questions, so please send, their, send them our way and your comments on this video or on the podcast, or you can send a, an email to podcast at magicianswithourborders.com or tweet them at magicianswb. We'll be glad to hear from you. And, well, today we've got this guest, Diego Vargas. He's the 2020 International Rising Star Award winner from Magicana, the Alan, Alan Slight Award. And, you know, he's, he's our head local magician in Costa Rica. He, he leads the program over there all the way since 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, he's, he's somebody that's very, very interested in the history of magic. And, and that's what this episode is going to be about. We're going to bring on Diego to talk about the history of magic and why is it so important to him and why it should be important to everyone. So without further ado, let's bring in Diego. Como estas, Diego? How Como are you? Estás? You are muted. So let's unmute yourself. <laughs> now I am here. Uh, so hello, Tom. Hello, uh, Carlos. It's always a pleasure to be here. And yes, oh. since 2015, I have the honor to uh, to work and to be uh, mentored by amazing kids here in Costa Rica. And now we're uh, waiting just a little to do our second program here in Costa Rica. So that is is that gets us very, very, very excited. 
almost as much as I am. Uh, no, I, I mean the opposite. I am. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I was. <laughs> I was meant to say I. I am uh, excited for the history of magic almost as much as for the as for the new kids coming for the program. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We can have many things we're excited about in our lives. I hope. Um, and how are things? How are things for you in, in Costa Rica these days with your um, magic life, performing, your family, just life in general? How is it? I will. I will. I will have to say, um, in general, everything is everything. Everything is 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 very good. I mean, uh, we're in still in the, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, things are a little more, more under control right now. I'm doing online magic, which I'm really in, liking it. Uh, but I do miss a little uh, live shows. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that, that I, I gotta say it for sure. Or watching the kids live. I, I just had a class with the kids. A class with the kids. Uh, we're putting together a, a program that is called um, Online Wizards. Uh, so they mastered the online magic thing. Uh, oh, good. So, yeah, so if there's someone right in here that wants to have uh, a show with the Magic Wizards, let us know. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this new Thurston uh, poster that I have. Now. Yeah. Well, be before before we get into this, just since you brought that up, what what are some of the key things that you taught them or uh, guided them about online magic. So, right. So today was the first class. So today we were uh, talking about uh, different tools. What, what, um, what are the the best of? Um, I mean, not the best, but for, uh, so we talk about, for example, what's the opportunities that YouTube has versus Zoom versus uh, WebEx or Google Meet uh, or th those th those things. So today were more technical things and. No. And I also perform something for them, so they could so they could feel that the online magic is equally as strong because magic is for the brain, and the brain can be amazed no matter where we are. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. Um, I, I pretty cool that they get to see you perform because the the performance that you that you do online it's very powerful, very entertaining. But yeah, you, you sometimes feel when you learn magic life and not through this medium that it somehow diminishes the the, the, the effect or the or the um, sense of wonder or amazement and, and I think it's it does not I think it's completely uh, equal and and you can do things that are different that you cannot do life and I think it's very very interesting as yeah well. I mean the thing the thing I think that's an interesting distinction and I haven't ever, quite thought about it that way that it might be just as amazing for the audience but for me it's not as satisfying for the performer um for myself speaking you know it might be for the two of you who are maybe more comfortable with uh with you know um the online magic um but i I find I've just been blessed that for some reason I've gotten a whole bunch of shows lately, like wow. three shows a week live, which wow. is amazing. I've just returned to doing live magic. That is amazing. And I can't tell you how much I'm loving it. It's like I've begun again for the first time, you know, I feel about 12 years old. It's really, 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 really wonderful. So anyhow, that's not what we're talking about tonight, but what about that distinction just really quickly between the experience for the performer, you and the, uh, the audience? Can you see a difference there? Like it might be really I mean, good for the audience, but not as satisfying for the person? Wow. Is that, or is that not true for you? Um, I will say that if we use the tools, I mean, uh, I think there is uh, some good opportunities uh, on, on, with, the, with online magic. One is that people can see the magic super close. I mean, we couldn't do this in, an, in a live show because people will have to be all of them like this. It, it will be... Exactly. Always, it will be 
it will be almost illegal <laughs> to have people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and and the other thing that I really like is that uh, for the first time we, we can we can hear everyone's thought for, because of the chat. Because in a in a live show people can do this, they can laugh, yeah. but they cannot talk because they will uh, interrupt the show. But with online magic, they can write what they're thinking, and it has, yeah. it has been a crazy thing to to be able to enter uh, 500 people's heads. And and I, I've I have found that there is always five um, people in, in in the show that are way funnier than me. Uh, just because a couple of lines they they wrote and I say whoa this guy or this girl should be doing the show not me this is this is very fun so uh -huh. that is is material that you can use as part of the show uh, so that uh -huh. is a good thing um, and the other good thing is I uh, using uh, a lot of Tamari's work with verbal magic and people doing things in their home that is very powerful too uh, but I will say bo both have different good things I I, I will I will ask. Online magic to 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 remain on uh, life magic as well. That that will be wow. my opinion. Okay, I think, I think they do complement each other, and that's we're at the beginning of online magic, and I think it's not going anywhere. I think it's here to stay. So I'm pretty pretty. I'm very glad that you got into it, Diego, and that you're doing very good at it. And this is definitely a new chapter in the history of magic. <laughs> this in in twenty very years. Well. Time, we're going to be looking back at 2020 and saying, whoa, remember that year when we all had to, you know, turn into online magic? I'm pretty sure that's going to be in the in the magic history books. So for sure. that, that's for sure. I, I was just wondering, when was the last time magic had this kind of change? When, when was the last time that, I mean, magic didn't have much change. We're not doing different things. We're doing the same things, yeah, but virtually. But I was wondering what what might be the greatest uh, feature for magic. Might could be could be the microphone, maybe uh, the microphone. Uh -huh. could be. I, 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 I think when, when when they went from from theater with live audience to television, that it must have been like a little change, like now, right? Like you're performing for a camera, right? There's no audience, no. There's just one angle, or, or all those things. Yeah, maybe that's something like, like that might be similar. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I was thinking the microphone because I uh, have you ever heard Harry Houdini's voice? I don't know that I have ever heard Houdini's voice. So so there is a recording of Houdini, and it's a recording of Houdini. Um, with uh, the things you you will put in the vitrola, uh, in the vitrolas, yeah, um, like wind up, yeah, yeah, and and there's Houdini talking, doing his lines, um, and yeah, he talks very funny. He talks, he talks, <laughs> he he doesn't talk like a performer, but, but that's because he will never perform with a microphone. So yeah. uh, so just imagine someone like Houdini just to do something with a microphone will change his entire thing. Uh, and, and that will be like a, like doing a show in Zoom. What's this for? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Really cool. So, Diego, talking all about this brings me or, or, or reminds me of a question that I wanted to ask you. And it's why and when did you get so much into the history of magic? So, um, I was into history in general before I was into history of magic. I, I remember I was in high school and I wanted to study uh, history in college. That was what, what the, the degree I wanted to, to do. Um, then I realized maybe I didn't want to do uh, history for a living, uh, but I, I was really into books of uh, Second World War and all. I mean, the history in general, in general will, will be very attractive to me. And then I read a, a book that I will never saw again. And I, I don't think I even remember its name. So uh, to do a little context here in, in Costa Rica, we don't have magic stores. Uh, it, this is 12, 13 years ago. So I couldn't go into Amazon to buy a book or something. So I, I got a photocopy book uh, that I think the name might be the Great Book of Magic, something like that. And it was a lot of uh, magic history there. And I just thought it was amazing. It, it, it was like a, like a walk through social cultures. And you can see 
uh, you could see a magician perform perform and and see and think that's a thousand seven hundred thing, uh, and that's not something you will see now, or, or that's something. Um, I mean, you can read the history of 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 humans um, with magic, and that, I think that is an amazing thing. We, we can forget how much the magic has joined and worked through humans during time. And the other thing I, I, I thought it was very, very interesting, it was that uh, music has changed a lot, uh, theater has changed a lot, and there are uh, a lot of uh, arts that has changed a lot, but magic did, has not changed that much. You can perform oh. cups and balls to someone and they will go, what? And that person can be a PhD on physics. And if you perform this exact same trick in ancient Rome, people will do the exact same face. So yeah. I just thought that was an amazing thing. And then I started reading about it and yeah, I got lost. Uh, yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting you say that like um, the last two weeks, uh, the chat uh, on uh, from the McBride School of Magic and Mystery has all been about the classics of magic because he's going to do a two day workshop on the classics of magic, you know, cups and balls, um, Chinese sticks, all kinds of things that we, the linking rings, um, various card, like six card repeat, like, um, all kinds of classics, you know? And I think, um, my show, for instance, that I'm, just getting ready to do at this resort every week in the Adirondacks, I begin with the cups and balls and the linking rings. And I, it's not exactly true, but I say these are the two oldest tricks in the world from the West and from the East. Uh, that's oh. not completely true, but um, I, I say that. It's not, it's, not, it's not also a lie. Could it be? So you it do... You do, you do linking rings and what's the other? Cups and balls. I mean, yeah. might be, might be. There's I also. Begin, I begin with the cups and balls and I say, I'd like to begin my show at the beginning. Huh. You know, that's, that's my opening line, you know, and then I do the cups and balls. And I, the cups and balls is one of those tricks. I hope the audience enjoys it as much as I enjoy doing it. <laughs> it's, one of, it's one of those tricks, you know, when you tip a ball off the top of the cup and you're loading another one. That move brings me so much joy in my hands that uh, I love that trick. It's beautiful. But anyhow, I think the classics connects very much with the idea of the history of magic. Yeah, they, they are classics because people will uh, love the tricks, and I am always thinking and wondering what will what what's gonna be the next classic. Uh, or oh, Tom, by the way, I, I, that's an amazing library that you have over there. Oh yeah, but so, this oh, well, yeah, uh, that, that is that, that is an important thing. This uh, this is a five. 100 year old painting. Nice. Is you that know? an original? Pardon? Is that an original? Is that? Oh okay. my God, no. This right. is by Hieronymus, Hieronymus Bosch. And yeah. I'll look at this. It, I, I often show this painting when I introduce the cups and balls because I say, you know, this is a very old trick and blah, blah, blah. And this. It gives magicians a bad name because this here's the magician and he's got this guy's attention and this man is stealing his purse. Now he's taking his money right here. He, <laughs> um, but anyhow, the cups and balls is, and I have to say, I got some of my lessons to doing the cups and balls from, from the professor himself, which is yeah. pretty wonderful. That is, yeah, and that is something that uh, I, I, I think a lot of magicians will love to say, but we can't say. Yeah. But I, 
but I can say I learned a couple of passes from you. So that's for professor. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of the history of magic, you know? Well, yeah, that is true. That, that, and, and that is entirely true because it, it's, it's crazy how a uh, so secret and hidden art has been passing mouth to mouth or uh, generation, generation, yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's a very sec sec secret, like very secret uh, form of art, especially if we go way back. Uh, and so I, I do think it's also amazing that sometimes we discover things, like for example, Hoff Sinser's story. Yeah. The Hoff Sinser story is a crazy story. We didn't knew nothing about the guy. And, right. now, and now we know uh, everything about, about the guy. And I think yeah. that. Uh, Thanks that. to people like Max Maven, for instance, who is a great, great lover of the history of magic. He's almost crazy when he teaches a trick. He tells who did it and then who did it next and who did it next and who did it next. But I just want to comment on something you just said, Diego. You kind of maybe it felt like a mistake in English. You know, you said. Um, it's sacred. Uh, it's a secret. They come from the same root in English. Hmm. Sacred meaning holy and secret meaning hidden, you know, or like that. And sacred and secret, if you look at that, the root of those two words, they come from the same root. You know, they're from this, just like dream and drama come from the same root. You know, um, amazing, and, and, and Carlos put some blue light for more drama, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right, on, well right on time, right on cue, yeah. That, that, so, that's cool. And and the thing that 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 amazes me is that even though we have you know a plural, a, 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 a democratization, you could say, about the secrets of magic because now we got this digital medium and everybody's learning. People that learn it from a teacher, right, from a mentor, right, they appreciate it a lot. And not, not only because it's like, hey, I'm teaching you, I'm, I'm giving you this thing that is both secret and sacred, right, for me. Yeah. So keep it a, a, as such. But also it's, it's that they they feel part of something bigger, right? They feel that they're, they're now part of something bigger. And, and I just br bring this into attention because Jason, who's watching us, who's a... Uh, one of our students in the slums of Bogota just said, you know, he just was saying hi. I said, hey, hi, how are you? And he said, I just want to say thank you for the magic. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for everything. And a little heart emoji. So wow, 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 wow. How they receive it, it's 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 very important, not just because it's secret, right? But because everything around it and because the way that it's taught, I think that's very important. And I, uh, I will say also that we are in a in a, a nice moment of history when magic, uh, it's more democratic, and I think here in Magician Road Borders that's something we do, uh, we do a lot, but back in the day, ma ma magic was for the elite, um, so Didi will perform for the pharaoh, mm -hmm. and the great magicians will perform for the kings and the queens. Yeah. So the people uh, that will be on the streets, all they had were, uh, I heard that there's a guy <laughs> that does this. <laughs> so so, so th th that will create legends of people doing, like, for example, the, uh, the Indian road trip. The Indian yeah. road trip. Mm. So for, for, for those that are watching, um, the fakir, the, ma the magician from, from, from India, Will uh, oh I, I have some pictures here actually I have some pictures of that exact thing happening right here I think yeah so this is the interpretation of Leroy Talma and Bosco um, oh yeah. yeah so the 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 magician will uh, take a rope he will throw it up in the air someone will climb through the rope will disappear in the air and then some versions the magician will go uh, with a knife in his uh, mouth. Parts of the body will go into the, I mean, a crazy thing. Uh, but no one has seen the trick. Uh, no one has seen the trick. Marco Polo said he saw it. Some other, 
I just think it was more a lot of those things that were happening uh, that pe people couldn't um, have access to. But now we, we, we have, magic is more democratic. And again, I, 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 I say it, I, I think it's one of the wonderful things we're doing in Magicians World Borders. I have always found crazy that if you go to a fancy restaurant and if you ask to everyone, have you seen a, a magic show? 70% of the people will say no. And they are fancy. Uh -huh. They are fancy people. Now let's talk about the kids in the suburbs or, in the suburbs yeah. or people at jail, people uh, in the hospitals. So, well, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a good thing that we have now in, in, in the present ma magic moment is that people doesn't have to listen of what they say a magician can do. Uh, they, we are more likely to, to see it. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. And hey, well, they've seen you, Diego. Look, Mark Madison just says hi. <laughs> Mark Madison. Uh, Mark Madison is a tremendous uh, friend. Um, and I, I cannot thank enough um, to Mark. Yes, I, uh, he is a good friend of Copperfield. And Mark uh, was the, the one who said, hey, David, I have a, a friend in, <laughs> in Costa, uh, in, from Costa Rica that is here. So thank Hey, Mark. So good to say hi. I am going to be in, in US in August. If you are around, I would love, I would love to say hi. Are you going yes. to be on the East Coast of the United States or just I'm going, I I don't know. <laughs> I'm okay. I, I'm going to be uh, in a, in the Magic uh, History Collectors uh, Convention. Where uh, is that? Las Vegas, Nevada. La, I've heard of that place, Las Vegas. <laughs> Nevada. No, uh, could I just go back to that Indian rope trick for a moment? Um, I think John Muhallen. And, um, you know, talking mm -hmm. about the history of magic, he claims he saw the Indian rope trick. Now, I, I don't know whether that's true or not, but um, I think it's a very important trick uh, um, in terms of this idea of secret and sacred. That mm -hmm. for me, um, I think the great trick is to die and be reborn. Okay. Well, that, that is now, a great trick. Jorge Blas has something with that. Okay, I just I'd love to hear that, but I don't mean just physically die and be reborn, like uh, Osiris or Jesus or the great myths of death and re and coming back to life. But I mean, like we were just talking, maybe magic at this moment in history is going through a death and but, reboot. But I mean, like we were just talking, maybe magic. No, what's happening here? I at don't this know. moment. In, is that, yeah. that? Okay. So, so magic is uh, having a rebirth in some way because of the pandemic, which is really, really interesting. And the Indian rope trick uh, people who don't know it, the idea was a magician would often do it at midday when the sun was right high above the, in the sky, right above. And, and he would take a rope. Mm. He would take a rope and he would throw it up into the air and it would stay up there. And then... He would have a little boy climb up the rope and disappear. And people looking up, they couldn't quite see because they were looking into the sun. So the magician would then climb up the rope with a sword or a big knife, scary looking big sharp knife. And he would climb up there and whack, whack, whack. Whack and pieces of the little boy, scary stuff would yeah. come falling down, and blood would come running down the rope, and all the pieces of the boy would be around the rope. That's a crazy, crazy, amazing it's scene. Crazy. And then the magician would climb back down the rope, take those pieces gather them together, throw them into a basket, 
put the lid on the basket, make some kind of incantation, some magic words, pray to the gods, whatever, and open the basket and out would come the boy renewed, reborn, a new, a new, wow. and, and that to me is the great trick. Like how do we through our lives die and are reborn? We use a word now, we reinvent ourselves. You know, that's the word, we reinvent ourselves. But that's an old trick. It's a, and psychologically, I think our life is a story of death and rebirth and death and rebirth. Anyhow, I think I love that. You know, I love that. I, I mean, it's 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 so uh, interesting to me how magic has always been uh, so important for. I mean, all civilization has all civilizations. All, all of them will have something to do with magic. So the, it is a, a, very, a very important thing, uh, a, a very important thing uh, for all. There's this uh, need of wonder that we, we have yeah. humans. And I just think uh, we as magicians has, have, oh, uh, Tom, do you remember the, the poem on, of Juan Tamaris in uh, The Magic Rainbow? That is, uh, it's, uh, it's a good summary of, of that. No, please, can you read it or can you? I can give it a try. I can give it a try. It's in Spanish, but I, I Well, that would be okay. I mean, if you want, uh, it's, a, it's a little magic history uh, walkthrough. So for those that are non-magicians, um, this is, this is, I hope this, this like it. And if this gets to Juan Tamariz, I'm sorry because I'm going to translate. Can you can you hold that book Magic Rainbow up so people can see it? There it is. The Magic Rainbow. Uh, oh, yeah. The Magic Rainbow. One uh one of my favorite books in magic for sure. Um so let me try to to, to see it. But uh one says that um and, and this is also true. If we go back on time their, their, their art was not a form of entertainment. Art was made to do something. So I, I, I can I, I feel okay saying that magicians were the first musicians, doctors, um, chemists, uh, because right you, because you will dance to make rain. You will sing to heal someone. You uh, singing just for singing was not something. Art uh, will have. Um, we'll have a a social purpose, a know? social purpose, a community and, purpose, and yeah. those who will do it uh, will be the magicians of the town. Uh, by they the way, weren't separated, there weren't like lawyers, doctors, yeah. entertainers, magicians, they were all integrated into one person you know call them the shaman or call them the sorcerer or whatever yeah yeah and uh in the in the I think it's great. in the in the uh first tarville uh, it's is a very is very well uh written it says we used to 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 be the guy the guys who will do everything now we take a little of everything <laughs> for our art so we take a little wow. of technology we take a little of Uh, chemistry. We take a little of um, everything. Uh, so that's in the first Tarbell. Yeah, it's in the it's in the first album. The, the first I part. I love part, that you said that. That's wonderful. yeah. In the in the first Tarbell, the first part is is magic history, and I really I I mean, if you think in the best course in magic is Tarbell, and yeah. the first thing they teach history. That's that, that's someone else saying. Yeah, uh, we all we sh we all should read magic history. Uh, yeah. that's the first thing we should we, we should know. Uh, so it's not it's not me saying it. <laughs> even even Tarbell that has been running around for a lot of years. Uh, I also have here um, Greater Magic also has a very. Oh good my goodness! I'm going to make a promise here in front of all of our listeners that I have. You won't believe this, Diego. What? But I have. The original Tarbell course. 
Oh my! I God. mean, the original course. Yeah, the letter, the one that was mailed. It's on paper, and it was mailed out every month. Mm. And a friend of mine, Jason Conway, who died a few years ago. God, I love you, Jason. He gave it to me. It's about this thick, and it's mimeographed chapters of the that what later became the Tarbell course. And I'm going to give you that. I, I'm going to give you that, Diego. Um, yeah, I, I, I would love. I mean, Tom, I will, I will die for that. I think that's... Uh, it's amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's a treasure <laughs> of magic. Did you knew, Tom, uh, th that uh, the Tarvel course was offered to Houdini? So it almost the name was Houdini Course on Magic. Oh, almost. I never heard that. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, wow. It, it was uh, almost, uh, Houdini even uh, said, I will think about it. But then uh, he said, no, I don't have the time for this. I don't think this is going to be, it's going to work out. And then uh, Tarbell will uh, took the, the, the lead on that. Uh, by the way, I, something I have always think is kind of fun. Uh, this book that might be Tarbell's competition, Greater Magic, um, <laughs> by John, John Northern Hilliard was illustrated by Tarbell. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So this is the competition of Tarbell, but the illustrations are uh, from from the same guy who will do the Tarbell. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a, a woman, Elise Freed, who's a great supporter of Magicians Without Borders, and her father founded Robin's Magic or Easy Magic. They have the rights to Tarbell's course. They're wow. And she just, I came home today and there's a phone call from her on the phone. They have the copyright to Tarbell's Magic. Um, and they do? Yeah. It's, that is amazing. It, it, it that is, is amazing. amazing. Yeah. So, hey, I'll, Diego, I'll, uh, let's let's try and read that, and then and then we'll. I, I would love to hear from you your your experience about doing the Monday of magic of history magic in yes, Instagram. Yes, We got together. Yeah, so but, I, 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 I will first talk about Monday history magic, and then I'll, I'll read this. Um, okay. We can okay. end with that. We can we we'll definitely end with that because I think it's a All powerful. Right. Because this might we gotta be have you back again because it's we only have twenty minutes left. It's amazing. Go ahead. Right. So um, I I I really think uh, magic history might be even more impressive than magic tricks. Uh, when you when you hear when you hear that this guy will wear a wig for years and years and will uh, fake Chinese because he will do a lot of money. And he was not a Chinese. I'm talking about Chun Lin Su. Yeah. And, and then he got killed. And the doctors are trying to save his life. And they go like, this guy is not Chinese. What's going on? I know. Uh, that's amazing. When, yeah. Well, when you hear that, that, those kind of stories, when you hear about Harry Cook being an escape artist uh, who will uh, fight in the Civil War and he got caught. And then the story, it looks like a movie a script. He will really, uh, because the other soldier said, let's tie this guy into this tree. Uh, someone probably said, how about killing the guy? No, no, just tie, let's, let's, let's tie him up. <laughs> what, what, what he will do, uh, and he will release himself, and then he will uh, go to see Abraham Lincoln, and uh, he, had, he will have this meeting to see Lincoln, and when he gets, they say, oh, Lincoln just left for, to see a play, and that's the play when Lincoln oh, got... Wow. And Harry Cook was there, and he couldn't say hello again to Lincoln. When when you hear those kind of things, or when you heard about the first uh, human being human in the history who hacked something was a magician, um, Maskelyne, young Neville Maskelyne's son. Uh, I, I mean, when you hear those kind of stories, I think that might be even crazier than seeing someone doing a magic trick. Uh, so I decided. <laughs> and so I decided I wanted to tell that uh, to people, to lay audiences. So um, because in my, I will do this in my Instagram. And I mean, I have some magicians that follow me in Instagram, but more of the people is lay, lay people. So I will do the whole introductions. I will say, 
this is Harry Keller. And I'll talk everything, why Keller was important and those kind of things. And then people got very into it. Um, Congress people from Costa Rica, very important people from the government or for the media, they will, they will say, hey, who is this Monday about? Uh, or I will say an inside joke about earth maze and people will get it. <laughs> and I just, I just thought that was, that was a very, a very, very cool thing. And then we did, we did a magic history talk. We did two. One was about earth maze. Uh, and I got, I brought uh, some of the books that was, uh, were um, wrote uh, because of Ernest. I will do a little things, but people will not go to see tricks. People will go to hear about magic history. And I thought that was a, a very beautiful thing. And the other thing was Mike Caveney, and um, he, he was here in Costa Rica and he will lecture uh, about uh, Alexander Ehrman and Chung Lin Su. Do you know what's the connection between Chung Lin Su and Alexander Ehrman. I don't know, no. So, um, Alexander Ehrman was um, the greatest magician of the time, and there was this guy who wanted to do a book on hands, on, on, on reading, reading the hands. Oh, so, palm, palm, palm reading. Palm reading, yeah. yeah. So, uh, he, will, he, he said, I need the hand of the most, the most important hands in U.S., Alexander Ehrman. For sure, these are the most important hands. He will have the president hands and blah, blah, blah. And then Alexander Ehrman dies and this guy said, oh my God, I don't, I, I'm gonna miss the most important hand of my book, Alexander Ehrman hands. So he called uh, Alexander Ehrman's um, magic assistant, whose name is William Robinson. Oh my goodness, William Robinson. That's that what I was- Chung Lin Su, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So Chung Lin Su was Alexander Ehrman magic assistant. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mike gave me pull out this paper, which is the original paper with Alexander Ehrman hand, because this guy thought, well, Alexander Ehrman is dead, but he's not bored. He's no one has buried the guy. So <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> he went to. <laughs> So say, he said, hey, William Robinson, who will later become Chung Lin Su, can I go and take put some ink in this guy's hand? <laughs> and, and then, really? He did that? And then Alexander Ehrman was naked on a, on a single platter. And then <laughs> the guy come with a link. <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. Mike Caveney has the original paper with Alexander Ehrman's hand. And that's something that, yeah, that's something I realized is even crazier magic history if that hand w- was an elvis presley guitar pick sure that would be an impossible thing to have but yeah. we are just a few magicians in the world so being able to have a 1915 poster like this one from alexander or this 1929 from thurston is not that impossible because there's not much people in the world that will think a lot of this so yeah, so I I thought it was the craziest thing in the world. Mike Kevin is saying, if you touch this paper, what that you can do later, this is gonna be the closer you can be to Alexander Ehrman, unless you go and you take it out of the ground. <laughs> with your so cool. So oh. I started doing, so start doing this Monday history magic thing, and I will say something I haven't said. Do you, this is gonna be the first place I will say it. But um, one of my favorite magicians, magicians in the world, Danny D. Ortiz, uh, told me, Diego, I want to do a magic history thing. You want to host it? And I say, yes. So now I'm going to do some uh, magic history thing for Danny, which is something I... Nice. Yeah. Wow. But, but, but I, 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 I want to keep the, the, the jokes and I, I, I want to keep it sexy. I want to keep it appealing. Not, not like the regular... Let's talk about Howard Thurston and those things. I want to <laughs> for, because I think it was a little bit more why, what, why? Because maybe if you're listening, you don't know your Diego's story. So tell us a little bit more how they are and why you 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 just said that that, that, that humor is important because I think it's a very it's a very unique take on telling the history of magic. It's because magicians will do crazy things, and I just think it's hilarious what they do. So I, I said, 
this is a great story, but it's also a hilarious story. This girl Minerva, who was who did his top competition, she will uh, to do advertisement. She will uh, be tied on a chair and throw up, throw um, from bridges to rivers. Uh, so <laughs> when you start reading that history, you are reading the history and you go like, "Stop it, Minerva! Stop it! Stop doing this! You're already forty something. You're still." are throwing yourself from bridges i don't know it, it's i just think it's uh it's hilarious how things are um are um so how things how some things happens in magic history and a lot of the things were will be happening in a very secret manner so i i cannot um i cannot stop imagine imagine being there and those guys being the only ones knowing that it's like when you're in a party that is a very formal thing and you want to laugh but you can't that's right. how that's how i, I imagine chulin su and his wife being like no <laughs> no one can know we are we are americans uh we're not chinese or no. uh, let me think in or alexander saying he will read people's minds and charging only for that. Uh, those kind of things I just think are very, 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 very fun. Uh, but the other thing I, I think is very hilarious to think right now is um, one of my favorite videos, if you wanna see magic history, go to YouTube and you put Mike Caveney, um, a spirit cabinet, and you will see Mike Caveney with the original Charles Carter the Great a spirit cabinet being performed and you as a man if you're a magician if you and if, and if you're watching this i'm telling you you're gonna be so fooled you're gonna be so wow i've saw the video i have no idea how many times and i will say how is this even working i have no idea and there's this spirit coming out of the cabinet and i am here in 2021 2021 thinking what so i just think it's hilarious to be to try to put myself in the shoes of people in 1925 watching yeah. and going back home saying holy holy, holy Christ, this is crazy what did what, what did i just witness i, I won't sleep tonight or yeah. in my entire life yeah or yeah, yeah. So I, I i just think magic history itself is hilarious when you when you see it uh from the magician's pers perspective yeah I, I just want to go back to the Alexander and the William Robinson. Did anyone ever do a reading of oh, that? Yeah. In the book. It's in the book, in the original book. In the original book that was published that I don't remember the name is, is so this guy, when it, he will have, I think, Alexander Graham Bale's hand, the president of the United States hand, um, and he will do the reading of uh, all hands. The story, as, as Mike told me, uh, is uh, the guy is Alexander Ehrman naked on the on the on the bed like that? He's putting the yeah. death, and then Alexander Ehrman's wife goes into the room and she's like, "What's going on? I'm I'm here to <laughs> to give my last words. What's what what's this for craziness?" And this guy has to convince Alexander Ehrman's uh, wife to let him put the paper, and he said, "I'm gonna give you a personal book." To you, I think might have that book. I think Mike might have that book. The one was given to Alexander Ehrman's wife. Uh, but yeah, the, that book is there, and Alexander Ehrman's reading of his hand is is there. Yeah, and it was it was Alexander Herman's hand. It's Great. Alexander's. Yeah, it's Alexander Herman's hand. It's a big hand, and I can talk to Mike, and he can show it later in another episode. I'm pretty sure he will be delighted to. Uh, and you can see Alexander Ehrman's hand in a blue ink, blue purple ink, in a just blank piece of paper that is in Egyptian Hall Museum, which is one of the craziest places I ever been uh, with John Gunn's museum. That was also very, very, very crazy. And where, where was that again? What museum? So yeah. the Egyptian Hall uh, Museum was the first, um, the, it was the first magic museum in US is right. back to the 19, very early 1900s. And Mike, and a friend of Mike, I think David uh, Price, I think, I may, might, be, might be saying his name wrong, um, they bought the museum. So each of them has, have a lot of crazy things. Um, like, uh, I, I, this is a funny story. 
I, I just start reading about Willard the Wizard, uh, which is this poster that is right here. And I am very crazy about Willard. So I, I am talking to Mike because I wanted to buy a poster. And I say, oh, Mike, you have a Willard poster. And he's showing me the posters in this table that it, it looks like is not an important thing with posters that he has. Uh, they're not impor that important to him. And he's, he's like, oh, do you like Willard? This table was from Willard. This is the spirit table. <laughs> uh, and he just have it like to put some coffee jug or a coffee mug or something. Um, but yeah, he has a lot of crazy things like Alexander Ehrman Hans. Oh, and I wanted to show one of my favorite books on magic history that I, that I will highly recommend. Because um, if you don't know Mike Caveney, he's uh, one of the funniest persons in the world with Tom Berner. Um, <laughs> And he has kind of the same approach on magic history. This is called Classic Co Correspondence. This might be my favorite book on magic history. And if you want to read something on magic history, I would highly recommend Classic Co Correspondence um, because these, these are um, letters from magicians to uh, other magicians. So for example, this is uh, a letter from the House of Commons to Carl Hertz. So this is the letter. This is a letter we'll, Mike will have. And then Mike will tell all the story about why the House of, House of Commons is writing to Carl Hertz. This one is very funny, actually, is the House of Commons giving permission to Carl Hertz to perform um, the, 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 the uh, decolta bird, uh, the cage disappearing. Oh, yeah. Because by, by this time, people were already saying, hey, you're killing the bird. You're killing the bird. So he, got, he went to the House of Commons to prove he wouldn't kill the bird. And so he goes and he says, let's sign the bird. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious by itself. You don't have, you don't, you don't, you don't even have to do jokes about it. It's already hilarious. So um, the letter says, uh, so Carl Hertz, oh, here is the police inspecting the, the cage. Uh, so this book is amazing because you can go from that to a letter from um, from uh, Alexander Weyer to Harry Houdini. So now you have a different story. So I will the entire uh, the entire letter says, Mr. Color Hertz, the chairman has no objection to you performing the canary trick. House of Commons. That's the whole letter. Wow. And then you and you will have the context of, of why he will be. Oh, he, here is the Carl Hertz uh, House of Commons pass from that day. And from there, you'll have, uh, there's another very fun, funny letter uh, from a magician. So uh, I was saying that magic will change during the history of, of time, uh, and it is. Um, so there's a letter that is very funny because apparently uh, on, on, the, on the first uh, part of the century of the 1900s, there was a very, a very uh, the, the trend magic trick. Uh, the magic, the Ruby cube of its time, it was, it was um, making water boil with your mind. Oh, so the magician will take water, he will put it into this glass, and the water will start will start boiling. And it was um, dry ice. That was wow. what it was, but it was new. People didn't knew dry ice. Yeah. Uh, so there's a letter of a magician. Uh, it was an important magician actually. Uh, talking to a, a guy who will get the dry eye, the dry eyes, but he's still telling something like, "Hey, I don't want any magician to know where I'm getting this. So let's meet in this street with this corner at this time." So he's like buying drugs or something. He's like <laughs> buying, he's like buying something. Yeah. So this is a book I really like because uh, in, you can go from subject to subject. You can go from uh, 1880 to 1930. Uh, from a page to the other, uh, it's it's a very very uh, good. Who put, uh, Diego? Who put that book together? Classic Mike Caveney. Classic oh, Mike, did, Mike Caveney did. By Mike Caveney. His uh, name. Yeah. His name is on the cover there. What's it say? Uh, it says classic correspondence from Egyptian Hall. Uh, I mean, here it says uh, Mike Caveney second edition. The fourth okay. edition is about to be released. And I got to say, uh, the new book Mike's putting out is very cool. It's called Sewing. And it's about uh, the sewing a woman in a half. Because this year, 
uh, the trick um, is 100 years old, is the, the, the 100 years anniversary. So there's a very cool thing that Mike's doing uh, and I'm helping. It, this is the first trick that has that is very old, but it still was created during the history of video. So there's a lot of video recollection of mm -hmm. how Thurston, yeah, that's a cool thing because Howard Thurston will perform it, Horace Golding will perform it, Pete Selvit will do his the original version. And um, yeah, from that to David Copperfield, Pendragon and all the new versions. Of the right. only right. most famous magic trick, if you go to someone and just ask in the street. But this is a great book uh, on magic history. The first one I read uh, was probably this one that is already a classic. That is called The Illustrated History of Magic. It's a great book on magic history. And if you want to go like deeper into someone, uh, there's books on everyone. So this is the book on Cardini, who, who will say he will wear gloves because during First World War, uh, he will be very cold. So he will have to practice with gloves and that's why he will wear gloves uh, performing. Yeah. And apparently that was a lie. <laughs> uh, apparently that's not true. This is the Wheeler the Wizard book. But I mean, if I would recommend a book to study uh, magic history, I will I would say go to Classic Correspondence. Uh, there, there's the also the volume three and four because it's hilarious. One of the funniest one is uh, about a guy that is trying. It's a guy trying to sell an, uh, an hypnotism course <laughs> to someone. Oh, what? Say that again? An hypnotism <laughs> course. Oh, yeah. It's hilarious because the guy is <laughs> sending a letter and the guy is saying, hey, you remember the last time I sent you a letter? The course was on $2. Now it's on $1.50. But it's going <laughs> to be this. The guy is like putting someone into a pyramid scheme. It's hilarious. Uh and yeah, so he's trying to convince the guy. He's saying, you know, with this course, you will be able to get all the money you want. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's very funny. It's uh, those kind of things. Oh, and the other cool thing on, on classic correspondence is that some, sometimes uh, there is a magician writing to a friend. So if you write, if you read uh, memoirs of Robert Houdin, uh, that this is actually my oldest possession. This is an original 1859. Memoirs of Robert Houdin. Uh, but Robert Houdin will say the things he wanted the audience to, to, to read or hear. But when you read classic correspondence, it's a friend talking to a friend. So then you, you, you read guys, very famous guys, asking for money, uh, saying, hey, my wife do this to me. Um, how is your daughter? Those kind of things that I think are a very, 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 very interesting things to to reading in magic. Oh, there, there's a guy uh, saying to Houdini, I just saw, <laughs> who was the, the show? They're talking about a, another guy's show and he says, I didn't like it. <laughs> 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 and it was one of the greatest. I mean, I might be Cotter, might be Horace Golding or someone like that. And he's like, I, I went to see his show. No, nah, no, nah, bad show, bad show. <laughs> yes, I, I, I know. I, I do think those are kind of funny things. Um, uh, well, yeah, but yes. We would love to, to continue this. I think this might be, there's enough information for another whole episode on this. So I want to wrap this up. I want to wrap this up, unfortunately. Uh, how, uh, would you, how would you like to wrap this up? I, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Yes. But if you want to, to try and read the, the, the poem or you say, hey, let's translate oh, yeah, the, the poem, poem and then let's let's try and bring it in another episode so we translate it with time and everything. I think that would be better. Uh, so so how about you, you, you help me answering these two questions? Yes. Uh, how would you summarize a, a why the history of magic should be important for all, for any magician. Why do you think that that is? Um, I will I will say because we owe to those to those people. We wouldn't be here standing, knowing the linking rings, if so someone wouldn't took the time to do it, to practice it, and to and uh, we do owe a lot to the to the people that were before us. Uh, even people like Tom, that is. Uh, 
I mean, Tong is not from the 1800, but uh, without Tom, uh, almost. Doing something, <laughs> <laughs> almost. No, uh, without someone, without Tom generation and uh, older generations, we, we, the young magicians, we wouldn't be here. Uh, so I think we owe that to those people that wanted to do, I mean, being a magician now is crazy. Being a magician in that time is crazier. So I, I do think we owe that to Huff Sinser being in his basement, working on uh, little things that no one will knew. And now we have the shells, coin shells, but uh, we have double face cards. And it's so easy to go and do it. But there was a guy who will spend hours and hours and money uh, to try to do something. Uh, so I think we owe that to that, that many people. And the other thing is, uh, if we know the history, maybe we can uh, change some things or uh, be very... Uh, uh, and the other thing, I, I think we can be... Uh, it can, can be a very good inspiration to try to uh, do things like Thorsten will do. And, yeah. Very good. Very good, Diego. Thank you so much, Tom. Any final last thoughts? It's, it's hard to uh, say anything better than that. I, I just think that uh, there's a tendency today to think um, we're beginning everything new, you know, but there are deep, deep roots that feed us. And I think this magic isn't just interesting. It isn't just funny. It's not just whatever but it actually is what nourishes us and feeds us. Uh, whether we know it or not, we are connected deeply to these magicians. And without them, we wouldn't be here. You know? Yeah, that is, that is true. And, and the other thing we have to remember is that every person's uh, history is different. And we as, a, we as a magicians, we have this ability to change someone's history. And we do it here in Magician Road Borders, but let's try to know the more, uh, the best, uh, so we can change other people's histories. So yeah. can we yeah. try to read the, the poem? Yes. Well, um, yeah, I'd love to hear it. Do we have time, Carlos? If we don't have, if we don't have time, that's fine. No, no, we, I, I would yeah. love, 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 love to hear it. All right, so this is a Spanish poem from Juan Tamariz um, that I will try to... Uh, um, let me put some... All right, so <clears throat> it says, uh, almost 52,000 years ago, a um, approx, a man and a woman went out of the a gathering of men and women that were there sitting in the in the floor of the cave next to the fire they were dressed and they were paint they were painted the men and the women moved their bodies rhythmically they shadowed um even uh, faster and faster uh, and even more high pitch and with their hands uh with dirt they would they will draw things in the walls of the cave they took um barro Mud. They they took mud that they, it was still wet, but they will keep it in a big uh, leaf of a tree, and they will they will give some shape with their fingers. They will form a head, and then they will took some stones and they will put it one on top of the other, and they will uh, they they form a very primitive altar. They imitate right there the gesture of the lion and the bear, and they chase each other. And they will tell something about a man, a legendary man, who hunt the bear and kill the lion with their bare hands. They pretend the rain was uh, falling and they try to imitate the shininess of the thunder. He took uh, the little one and he, uh, he threw it into the air and picked it with, in, the, in, the, in his back. He showed his hand was now dry and then it was wet. And the imaginary thunder burned his hand inexplicably. And with the with passing the one, the the burn of the thunder was it, it disappeared. Even more inexplicable, um, impossible. The faces of the people that were uh, sitting there in the floor 
where uh, they pass from wow to fear and they g gather one to each other. The men and the women, they point to the heaven above the cave and they fall uh, very uh, happy to the ground, very tired by the frenzy of the dance. And the people in the, that were gathered, they hid their hands uh, and to their bodies during a long time. And then they later fall into sleep in the floor, but some of them dream. Some of them dream that 50,000, 52,000 years later, approximately, that thing that was um, begin there, that night in that cave will be called dance, music, ballet, singing, theater, sculpting, painting, religion, medicine, and magic. The magic of that night was now called art and science and religion, and also magic. The magic that will talk about the unlimited power of gods and rit and and um, ritos uh, and right. yes, <laughs> uh, and myths, the 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 wonder and the the dream that that power uh, talked about the imitated power of gods. And the dreams in a symbological language, ancestral, universal, and deep. And a young guy wake up 52,000 years later, approx, Juan Tamariz. He doesn't say that. I, we know he is. And he knew Vernon and his Ladini. And he saw a band of Fraxen, and he, vis and he went to visit Fu Manchu and Ascanio. And he even talked to Robert Houdin, and he even talked to Hop Sincer through writing and through reading. And he looked in a little box how David Copperfield will flew and how Doc Henning will become a child. And he will play with the spirits of Leipzig, Leipzig and Malini. And he was able to read the Tarbell and Stars of Magic. And he went to gather in this society of Spanish magician with Juan Anton, Florenza, Puchol and Varela. And he would be able to admire the posters of Chun Lin Su and see the effects of Fred Caps and feeling the emotion, the emotion to see uh, how a, a little knife will change color and a sponge ball will disappear and how the reds will split from blacks. But he was not the only one awake, awaking. Some others that will be in that night, mythical night, wake thousand years later and they will be able to present the magicians uh, of the time. And they, uh, they, they saw the emotions that will combine the tickleness of the interior um, of our heads of Saurus, the very deepness uh, emotions of our mammiferous uh, brains, and the intellectual admire, uh, uh, admiration and uh, hallucinant admiration of their ominid brains. I'm sorry if this is too long. <laughs> no, uh, you're doing fantastic. All right. In, in one second, well, what? In one, in one second, they will be came to feel the arc and power of the myth, the horror bakui of the disappearing, the terror to death and the victory into resurrection. The road that was cut in half was then um, recomposed. And then, yeah. and then the power of levitation, the flying, the ascensional rising to skies. And finally, their brains... They, found, they melt into one and they feel like childs and they were able to play. Play the artistic game, very, very useless, but beautiful, with life and death and the power of gods and miracles. Cards were um, guests and travel cards were changing from one to the other. The, the being and not being in just one second. The amazing energy, ludic, uh, posit uh, positivity, and the, and the divine love. And, and then... They met Fraxen. <laughs> Some of those that wait, awake 50, 52,000 years later, approx, they exercise their voice in singing, their bodies in dance. They're speaking through theater and um, public speaking. The words in poetry and novel, the tales, and their fingers put in, they will put in piano. Their pulse with the, with the pencil and the spatula and their gesture in mind, but some of them, just some of them, not much among all of them, they will, they will practice at the same time with their fingers, with cards and gestures and words 
and speaking and bodies. One step ahead, one step back, let's spin, relaxation, tension, their uh, eyes crossing with their fingers, their hands uh, coordinated with their words, their voices, and even their psychology to create and interpretate the beautiful and super hard uh, games with four aces and 10 thimbles, their okita ball, and their creations with um, those that were came out of nowhere, and their inagotable coins, and their triumphs, amazingly car triumphs, a, a very complex art that will demand the control of fingers, hands, body, voice, look, words, and psychology. A beautiful art that talks about the myth and symbols and game with the profoundness of, of game that will uh, bewitch and fascinate every capes of the brain that will put us in in face in, in the face of mystery that will talk about the dreams that imitate not the men as theater not the rhythm as music not the singing of birds like singing not the nature like uh painting or sculpting not the dreams as movie theater as movies but the imitate the power of gods nothing less the fascinating total art of magic that's why it gets to everyone, the universal language that makes kids vibrate. They don't question it. And the older that knows that real, their real irrealness. And to people that are cult and they uh, appreciate their complexity and profundity and, and alphabets that feel their power. To young people that immerse in the adventure of the unknown and mystery and all that they get profound into their new childness. To men and women, smart and dumb, intellectual, artists, scientists, and on and on and on. But all of them feel their power. They're called to inspiration and freedom and intellectual freedom. First um, challenged, then delivered. And, and to their desire of play, that beautiful art of the impossible, the imitation of the actions of the God that will keep remain for a long time later on. Um, bewitch and be turning everyone into child, poetically. Everyone that falls into their net of games and dreams and to their mythical effects and their ends homes and rituals of their magic. And that during at least 52,000 years approx. And we, the magicians, we will transmit it. So nice. Wow. That's one Tamaris, one Tamaris poem is, yeah, I almost got emotional. Sorry to take your time. Thank you for joining. No, thank you. <laughs> And thank you, Tom and Carlos, for the uh, chance to be here. Boy, thank you. I would love to do this again and again. Okay. Me too. Me too. Wonderful, wonderful closing to this wonderful conversation and episode. Thank you so much, Diego. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Diego.